In this episode, we are going to be exporting our Webflow projects and bringing it into Pine Grower. It's going to be a double whammy because I'm also going to be showing you how to properly deploy a website. We're going to be going down a free route first and foremost and a very simple route. People are still logging in with FTP and once you overwrite those files, they're gone. So we're going to set up a pipeline, say there's an error, you can undo those changes and then the new version, which was actually the old version, will get deployed. And in case you didn't know, Pinegrow is what I consider a far more powerful, far more flexible, no-code platform, similar to Webflow, that I've been producing content for for the last, I don't know, year or so. Let's jump right into it. I'll try and make these as quick as possible because I know your time is precious. And so why not get cracking? In Webflow, if you don't know, being able to export your code is a paid for feature, unfortunately. Um, it comes with the account plan. I don't think it needs a site plan, but it comes with the account plan. And it's basically, I think 20 bucks a month, something like that, or you pay for the year. If you're already paying for it, great but you might need to just swallow that initial payment just to get the export kind of feature working. So I've clicked into a website here and you'll see this um, export code button at the top here. Now I haven't got the plan, but luckily I've exported this website. But when you click um, that, you should be able to, this upgrade plan will, won't say upgrade plan, it would be uh, export code. And then you download that zip folder full of all that code. What's exported is all of your CSS, all of your pages, the HTML, the JavaScript that's necessary that includes your interactions, and then the various pictures and images that you use on your website. Now, it warns you here that it doesn't include na native form functionality, and I'll make a video on that if you'd like me to. Just, again, leave me a comment. And then it also warns you that the CMS data doesn't export. Now, that's a bit trickier. Um, and again, I think that will be a separate video, but it could be quite a fun episode to build their own CMS, have it work with, with Pine Grow, but for another day. So once you've exported that, you should have a zip file. And now we're done completely with Webflow. Opening Pine Grow, what you want to do then is open a project. And I have downloaded this um, this uh, project already and you can see it's got all my files here and if I select that it will now open it in Pinegrow. If we click on our index HTML you can see that everything even the images and the, the, the links to all the images is all working and we can even we turn JavaScript on we even get our interactions fading in which is great. Go down to mobile, desktop, and all the rest of it. So you can see our, our website is fully functioning. Um, and, 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 and now you're in Pine Grove and you can easily make changes here. You can make changes to the head. Um, you can do whatever it is that you need to do. So to a few of you, that was probably pretty underwhelming. Uh, Pine Grow just picks up on the HTML files and gives you complete access to begin dragging and dropping your um, different elements, changing your design. For all intents and purposes, it's now a website that was never created in Webflow. So what we're going to go on to now is actually deploying a website the air quote correct way or at least a more safe way than simply FTP in and this is going to be free what we're going to do is we're going to be using github so you're going to need yourself a github profile and we're going to use netlify which you can um, sign up for netlify again both are free so this is going to be the thing that stores the code and the different revisions of your code base before we get going one thing I would strongly recommend is creating a git ignore file and you can do this quite easily uh, from either within pine grow or a little bit easier is just within visual studio code which which you can edit code and you're going to name your file dot git ignore and the reason we're doing this is that pine grow creates a bunch of folders that basically maintain your UI, how you've arranged your UI and various things like that. I've not dug too much into exactly what it's doing, but essentially GitHub and other users or other developers don't need this, these files on your on their systems when they're using Pinegro, they need their own versions. So within a git ignore folder, uh, this is a kind of standard git ignore folder, probably 
remove these two here, but underscore PG backup, underscore PG info, pinegrow.json, and then DS store if you're on Mac. These, this is kind of like the standard thing uh, that you want to include in your project before we move it on to Git. Now, again, you're going to need um, Git installed on your computer, and I'll leave a link to instructions on how to do that. I'm not going to go through it right now, but essentially we want to create this into a Git um, project. And I often start just by jumping into GitHub and just creating a project there, and then it gives you instructions on how you would then push your, your Pine Grow project up into this repo. And once again, I have already done this and you should find that the website should appear in inside of GitHub and that's kind of it. And the workflow would be if you make an update, if you change something, um, I'd strongly suggest understanding and learning how to use Git. But at the very least, you'll be doing um, Git add full stop, Git commit updates and git push and those three commands will then take the latest version and override the the revisions that's happening on on github and then you can see i've not touched this website in years in fact but you can see i've initially committed i've maybe changed it a little bit and then i've updated a calendly link very very simple but you'll see this history if there was an error in this push then you can then revert it to a previous version and and that that's where the power of you understanding git and using git comes from because we can we can navigate through the history and nothing is ever permanent you've even got a record of what the website looked like at that commit you can see what the website kind of the state of the website did it look like and navigate through all those files and actually see what the changes were as well so if we go in here you can see what the changes are Again, this is not a lesson on Git, but it's just to encourage you to go and explore how to use Git to store and keep the history of your website. So with that now, how do we get this website live? Well, so we're going to be using a tool called Netlify. And I've got a bunch of new sites here, but you're going to go ahead and you're going to import an existing project. OK, and you've got various logins here. And obviously we're using GitHub in this example. But if you were to log in, this is just logging in here. It's now going to pop up with all the GitHub repos that I have. See, I've got a bunch there. I know, for example, this has already been uploaded to here uh, into the Jupyter in the Draft um, category. And you can kind of leave this as it is. Uh, it's a static website. It's not nested in any folders. We're not having to go into any folder to serve a specific thing. It's all completely flat so we can we can actually then just go ahead and click deploy site straight away here. And again, I've already done that. What you'll get given is a going to domain management. You'll see it, it will give you a junk kind of URL where you can then visit that website after it's been deployed, which is great. And then uh, again, this won't be a lesson on Netlify, but then you will add your domain name to this. And there, there are tons of guides out there on how to do this. Again, I'm not going to tell you how to do that right now, but this is effectively your website now that's been deployed. And what will happen because you've linked your GitHub repo to the to the Netlify um, account, every single change that you make will then be or, or pushed into Git rather, will be deployed to your Netlify profile. And all this is free. All this is free. So going back into Pine Grow, you know, like I say, we can we can treat this like any other no code pine grow project so i can flip these around i can um you know just start swapping stuff around as you would expect change the um change the text and once i'm happy with that save it push it up to github it will automatically deploy to netlify and that is all it takes to export your Webflow project, bring it into PineGrow, and have a really safe and confident deployment structure that costs absolutely nothing. So hopefully I'm gonna make this transition from a 
proprietary, limited, and expensive Webflow experience into Pi and Grow a hell of a lot easier. So thanks for sticking around to the end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. If you want to hear more about the Pi and Grow kind of 101 stuff, obviously subscribe to that. And if you want to support me, then you can do so at buymeacoffee.com slash fake Sam Gregory. Those, those little donations really go a long way to helping me create content. Um, and I think that's probably about it. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and uh, happy building the future of the web.